Hello and welcome to this AutoCAD tutorial video for AutoCAD 2017. In this video we're going to start considering dimensioning our drawings. So the first thing that we're going to do when it comes to dimensioning is we're going to have a look uh, up here uh, on the ribbon and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, select the annotate tab. So that's this tab here. So you can see here we've got lots of information that we can add to our drawings, lots of different types of information, text, dimensions, center lines, leaders, and so on and so forth. But what we're going to be looking at first of all uh, is how to create a new uh, dimension style. So if you drop down this menu here, you can see that there are quite a lot of styles already available uh, when you uh, open a new drawing uh, in AutoCAD. Not all of these will be available. Some of these are ones that I've tweaked and modified along the way. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, pushing this button, which brings up the Dimension Style Manager window here. So having a look at this, you can see these are our different options that are available. Okay. Uh, now the ISO 25 uh, comes preloaded as standard on uh, AutoCAD. And the ISO 25 standard is obviously the international standard uh, that works uh, with uh, drawings. Um, however, there's one or two things about it that I personally just don't particularly like, don't sit too well with me. Uh, as you can see in this preview, uh, angles uh, and radii and uh, aligned dimensions, the text follows the line of the angle uh, or the uh, aligned dimension, which looks a little bit funny to me. Uh, I was always taught that when you uh, create a drawing, uh, you should only have to look at the drawing uh, in one position to read the dimensions, and at the most two. Uh, you shouldn't have to keep on turning it around to read different dimensions. So we'll have a look at um, what the basic ISO 25 standard is uh, when we uh, modify this. But then what we're going to do is we're going to look at this uh, creating our own dimension style because it, it's very likely that the company that you work for uh, will have their own dimension style. It might be based on ISO 25 with some tweaks, it might strictly adhere to ISO 25 or it might be uh, very different indeed. So let's have uh, a look at this. If we want to create a new dimension style we click this button here, uh, mark new, and then uh, it gives us a new name. So we, we'll call this one Worksheet X just for want of a better name. Uh, and here we've got the option which one of those existing dimension styles managers do we want to start out with. So we'll start off with ISO 25 and continue. So this brings up now the uh, dimension style uh, uh, organization tab here uh, where we can uh, put in lots of different options for what we're interested in. Uh, so if we start with uh, the leftmost tab uh, with lines, you can see here you can change the color, the line type and the line weight. At the moment they're all set to by block. Uh, obviously when we install dimensions as seen in a, a previous video we'd normally put those onto a specific dimensions layer which will have certain attributes which will create the dimension that we're interested in. So uh, some interesting things on uh, this page, uh, just things to to bear in mind, uh, dimension lines are the actual lines with the arrows themselves, those are the dimension lines and down here we've got extension lines uh, and extension lines are uh, these points here that extend off the drawing. Uh, so those are extension lines, these are dimension lines, just to make sure that you've got that clear in your mind. One of the things on here that you might want to tweak, uh, here you've got extend beyond dim lines 1.25 and offset from origin 0.625, that basically means it'll be 0.625 of a mil of a gap between uh, the edge of the object and the dimension line, uh, sorry the extension line. Uh, I like to increase that a little bit, I like that to be about 2 uh, and again it's, it's a fairly standard thing to set the uh, extension lines, that's how far the uh, extension lines go past this dimension line, so this little bit kicking out here is to keep that the same, keep that at 2 as well. So you can see that that distance there and that distance there will match. So that's quite a nice thing just to tweak uh, and keeps the drawing looking nice and neat. Uh, again, everything that I put in here is, is partly my opinion. I'll mention if it's from an international standard or a British standard uh, and of course a lot of companies will just have their own system in place. So there's nothing to say that this is right or wrong or better or worse. Things will change depending on where you're working. So uh, let's have a look then at the next tab. Uh, symbols and arrows, so this is uh, what the arrow heads will look like. You can have closed filled or closed blank, you can see that opens the arrows up. Again we normally stick with closed filled. Uh, you can uh, change one arrow head and not the other and you can change uh, what the leader will look like as well. 
uh, when we come to that. Arrow size can be changed. If we tweak that up to 4, it'll make the arrow head slightly bigger, which you can just about see on there, makes them slightly larger, which on an A4 drawing uh, will look pretty good. Uh, and we can change other things uh, on here as well. Uh, on a later video, we'll discuss uh, jog dimensions, putting jogs into dimensions. We don't need to cover that right now, but we'll come to that in a later video. Uh, so uh, we'll explain that another time. Then we've got our text, uh, the textile colour and fill colour, uh, and the text height. Uh, again, 2.5 uh, is reasonable for an A4 drawing, that normally works out pretty well, so we can leave that as it is. Uh, and we've also got a few little bits and bobs, you can put a frame around the text if you want to. Personally, I don't think that looks any better uh, than, it, than uh, when it's not there, I think it looks better without. Uh, and text placement, uh, this, is, uh, this is an interesting one. So again, what does this look like? Is it uh, centered within the line as it is here as you can see these have been moved outside because they won't fit in the line there uh, horizontal we'll keep that as centered uh, and view direction left to right uh, and we can also here put in uh, do you want your text alignment to be aligned with the dimension line uh, so the ISO standard uh, makes it look like that so you can see here the radius is flat uh, that's uh, also flat that would that would fit in there now and we'll be able to move that round as we'll see uh, in the next video in the series uh, but what I like to do is as you can see this line is still uh, this text here is still in line with the uh, dimension line I like my text alignment to be horizontal like that so as you can see that now nicely fits inside there uh, you only need to hold the drawing in one position to read the dimensions and that just looks pretty good I think that's a, a nice uh, neat drawing uh, for that to look like so that looks pretty good uh, fit uh, this determines where the text and the arrows go uh, so as you can see you can tell it to put the arrows on the outside of the dimension first if the arrows and the lines won't fit uh, but again if you just leave that on either uh, text or arrows then it will make a judgment on what you prefer and you can always move it around uh, if you don't want that to change uh, we'll discuss uh, scaling uh, later on when it comes to annotative uh, dimensions when we look at layouts uh, so that's just uh, some further information uh, on this one. Uh, your best bet with a lot of this is just to play around changing different things and seeing how it affects uh, your uh, drawing as a total. Uh, again with AutoCAD you learn by doing, learn by tweaking things and seeing what happens uh, and you can always change it back if you need to. Primary units we're working in decimal provision is 0. Point, uh, precision rather sorry is 0.00, .00. Uh, so that means that there'll be two decimal places uh, used after the decimal point uh, and we can uh, we can use that quite nicely the decimal separate here is commonly a comma I prefer it to be a period or a full stop if you're listening in England uh, and uh, that, that I think again looks uh, a lot more uh, straightforward uh, you can have a rounding off in place as to how many positions you want to round off to uh, but we'll just keep that at zero for the time being uh, so again uh, that is our primary unit sorted. For dimensions, uh, it's automatically set to decimal degrees, but you can change that to degrees, minutes and seconds if you want, gradients or radians. Uh, however, uh, decimal degrees normally works just fine uh, for uh, most drawings. And again, most engineers who are, who are reading drawings will be happy working in degrees when it comes to manufacturing physical things. It's not often that we use uh, radians uh, in terms of actual... Uh, images on a drawing, manufacturing drawings, it, it might lead to a bit of confusion. Uh, we can put alternate units on, so at the minute this box is unchecked, if we check that you can see what it's done now is it's put in these values uh, in inches as well as in millimeters, uh, so we can change that if we want but we're just going to leave this, leave that off for the time being. I, I, never seen a drawing personally that has both of them on uh, you'd normally be better off producing a second drawing for that uh, in some way because it's it's going to end up you, as you can see immediately from that you're starting to get a very very crowded drawing which could lead to an awful lot of confusion the goal remember when you're producing drawings is to convey as much information as possible uh, by putting as little as possible really is, is kind of the goal uh, you don't want to crowd your picture with unnecessary information uh, when you can do it more concisely and again that's part of the skill of becoming uh, a drafts person uh, finally a word on tolerances at the minute tolerances are set to zero, uh, set to none what we can do is we can add tolerances so here you can see we've got plus and minus zero uh, we can set it to deviation 
so we've got uh, two options here now, zero and minus zero. Uh, limits, so an upper value and a lower value. And again, because we're not actually changing these at the moment, this, this won't apply. Uh, and basic, so those are the uh, different options. Uh, so at the minute, we will be uh, working later on uh, with a drawing that has the deviation option. So just to uh, explain this a little bit more, here you set what the value will be. So if we want our tolerance to be, let's say, half a mil, and put in 0 0.5 there, and you can see you've got plus 0 0.5 and minus 0. Uh, so let's say we want this to be 0 0.25, just picking random numbers at the moment, and you can see that those have uh, been placed on there now. Um, again, uh, this vertical position option, you've got the bottom, middle, or top value. At the minute it's set to bottom, which means that the uh, lower value is in line with the dimension value. If we change that to middle, it sits between the two, and if we change it to top, it looks like that. Again, personally, middle, I think, always looks best. Uh, and I always like to have my decimal separators aligned, which basically means that they will snap to the decimal point, and it just tends to look an awful lot more, uh, an awful lot neater. So again, here we've got 0 0.00 as our uh, precision. Uh, if we change that to 0 0.00, you can see that that is now rounded off to 0 0.3. You can just about make that out in the drawing there. So uh, we'll just leave that on 0 0.00 so we can see that that lower value is 0.25. Very good. So uh, that is an overview of the new dimension style. So if we're happy with that, we click OK. And then if we want to use it straight away, uh, we just need to make sure we've got it selected and set current. And then any dimensions that we apply to the drawing now will be in the style of worksheet X. So that's what we'll be looking at. So I hope this video has been of some help to you. Uh, and hopefully uh, we'll see you again on the next one. Thank you very much. Goodbye.